There are a lot of annoying, cringe, and anti-social music fan bases out there. So we're going to figure out which fan base is the worst using a tournament bracket, where 64 different artists will be competing to see who has the worst fan base. This bracket is pretty big, with each genre and lots of artists to choose from. So we decided to organize each category of the first round by the kind of person we think would listen to these artists. Loser core. Radiohead versus Nirvana. This is a really tricky one. I think it has to do with the fact that you can buy the smiley face merch at any Walmart or Target in the country. There is no average Nirvana fan because everyone's a Nirvana fan. So everyone is pretty much the status quo. I'm going to say this. Radiohead equals no bitches. Weezer versus My Bloody Valentine. Baby's first shoegaze versus music for babies. There's this characteristic that Weezer fans have where they're self-hating, self-deprecating. Haha, no one hates Weezer more than Weezer fans. I can't stand that shit, bro. It's just an evolution of of that 2013 Reddit humor, of that Reddit millennial humor. They'll make a, a dumb joke and go, I hate myself. <laughs> I think that alone makes me want to push Weezer in, into being the winner yeah. here. The Smiths versus The Cure. I see The Smiths as being the obvious male manipulator right. music. And then The Cure as the girl that's being manipulated. Picturing a lot of Cure fans, and that's a, that's actually scary accurate. Not making it, again, like a female thing, but it's like, they're all submissive dudes, and they're all just kind of shy and like a little bit nerdy. The Cure versus the Smiths. Yeah, the Smiths are gonna win. The Strokes versus video game OSTs slash military marches. Do you go with either A, the kid who's always bumming a cig off of you and hides the fact that his parents are rich, or classic, classic JROTC kid. There's a this one JROTC kid that was in my history class. He was like a really animated, wiry, squirmy kind of guy. We were watching Rocky. I think it had something to do with the Cold War. And he would do this thing like during the last fight scene. He sat in the back of class and he would like mimic all of Rocky's moves at 100% intensity. By the time the movie was over, he was like hopping and puffing and out of <laughs> and out of breath. It's no competition. Go white boy, go white boy, go. Really interesting first matchup for the go white boy go category. I can think of a Cardi or Opium fan and it's like Oh, black Hellcat, Asian girls, Opium, if looks could kill. I can't really do that with Kanye. There's no bizarre identity built off of being a Kanye fan like there is with Cardi and like, oh, he's trying to be Cardi. Oh, he's a meat rider. He's trying to be Cardi, you know? I agree. Cardi's the clear winner here. Yabujin versus Suicide Boys. We both saw Suicide Boys when they were in town. It was as if we went back in time and saw Slipknot when they were at their peak. That's, that's pretty much what the fan base looks like, right? So those people can be cringe without knowing that they're cringe. But with Yabujin, those people have a lot of potential to be cringe because of how online they are. But with that comes a sort of self-awareness. When it comes to Suicide Boys, they're a lot less likely to be self-aware of how cringe they are. Yeah, you yeah, make a strong I, argument I, for Suicide yeah. Boys then, yeah. So I would give it to Suicide Boys. Blade or Yeet. It's been said that Blade hates the way his fan base like makes cringe memes about him and like always calls him gay. We've seen both of these artists. When, when we saw Yeet, people were like doing the whole push pit 175 thing, stepping on each other before the show started. Started, and the cops had to come out to tell people to like chill out. It was probably like a top three worst crowd I've ever been in. You go to a Blade show and you fall, people are gonna pick you up in the pit. You go to Yeet, that's not gonna happen. There's no sort of like etiquette or common ground or culture. This one might be controversial, but Yeet has a worse fan base than Blade. I agree. Space Ghost, Perp, and Little Tracy. Little Tracy, young bruh. You think about the kind of fans that he has. 15 to 17 year old e-girls. I mean, everybody's cringe at 15 yeah. to 17, you know, teenage years. It's always like weird and awkward and kind of cringy. Space Ghost, Perp fans, on the other hand, I think about this kind of new person that's come about. Just reminding you that Space Ghost Perp was here to start it all. He's the real godfather. Just kind of rubbing their knowledge of Space Ghost Perp in your face. Especially if in 2023, he's an artist that you're consistently listening to, you're going back to. You're probably a weirdo. I guess Space Ghost Perp beats Lil Tracy. Greasers. Not the cool kind. Tool versus corn, baby. This is gonna be nuts. I know the meme behind Tool is that like all of these guys are just really annoying. They're really into the Fibonacci sequence, math and music and DMT, Joe Rogan type beat, right? So in reality, I feel like all the Tool fans I've met are actually chill people. We have to figure out what kind of corn fan we're talking about here. Are mm -hmm. we talking about a corn fan that loves like their classics, like Life is Peachy? Someone who today can say, 
I like Korn's music. I go back and I listen to Korn's music. I really enjoy it. 40 something, like mm-hmm. working kind of like a blue collar job. Yeah. They're like, man, I freaking love Korn. Yeah. You know, I love like their new stuff. Those, I've been blasting those it. Those guys are kind of cool too. So it, it's. They're probably more cringe than as cringe as a Tool fan could be. Well, I mean, can you really blame a 46 year old dude that he's cringe, you know? But still, nonetheless, they exist. I think Korn would probably have yeah. to win. Ghost versus System of a Down. I've met a few Ghost fans before. They've all been super cringe. However, the System of a Down people. They love talking about the Armenian genocide. They don't even know what it is. Oh, the Iraq war. It, w- it was like really bad, dude. They'd probably say it more like, ah, the Iraq war. And, ah. Yeah, I, I think Ghost. Ghost has got to win, yeah. Deftones versus Hoobastank. This dude, is, I don't even know really... of any Hoobastank fans in 2023. I'm not going to lie to you. I think the comments from our Deftones video say it all. You know, I've known about Deftones yeah. forever. They've always been good, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, we know that. But that doesn't mean they didn't gain traction because yeah. of TikTok also. And it's like, gosh, dude. They act so superior about it. If you're over the age of 25, you are not welcome on this channel. Unless you're buying your shirt. Neopunkfm.com. Get your shirts. Male manipulator shirt. Autistic virgin shirt. It's like candy. You gotta buy it. It's so good. You, you can't get it. enough. People often talk about gatekeeping artists that get big off the internet. Deftones, they were obviously big before the internet, but because of TikTok, they've gotten big again. I don't think we have to worry about Deftones being gatekept because their old head fans are like a natural immune system against anyone else that wants to get into Deftones because they're so insufferable. Deftones has got to win here. Meshuga versus Megadeth. I don't like metal. It has a lot of gimmicks attached to it. When I think Megadeth, I think like, oh, like aliens, uh, Area 51. Oh, and the government sucks, dude. Every metal band has like a gimmick now. They're either like aliens or goblins where they shoot green slime into the crowd like it's the Kids Choice Awards. Just make good music. When I think Megadeth fan, I think a dude that's had two or three marriages under his belt and he still is mad at his first ex-wife and he'll do <laughs> something like drive across state lines to a new gas station he's never been to before and write her number on the bathroom stall so i'm going with megadeth hyperslop Apex Twin versus 100 Gex. 100 Gex fans, ADHD goblins that they kind of jump around at 20 miles per hour and, and they bunny hop like in Gary's Mod, except in real life. Bottom line is this, the worst thing that an Apex Twin fan is going to do is be annoying about how they knew them before they became a TikTok meme and how and getting cred from that. Now, the worst thing that a 100 Gex fan would do is carry around one of those like sets of toy, like those like play car keys they give to toddlers and like wave those around in your face. Or a sensory slug. We'd have to give this one to 100 Gex. Sophie and Bjork. So even though they are a good artist, it's still one of those things where it's like, I'm going to let you know that I listened to Bjork, even probably back in the day. I'm assuming they were doing that to a degree. I'll say this for Sophie. Her fans do consist of hyperpop fans. And we all know that hyperpop fans can be a little bit more online. I think what this question boils down to really is with Bjork, you have multiple decades of bad fans to choose from versus Sophie. You only have Less than one, so I'm gonna have to give this one to Bjork. All right, so we got LCD Sound System versus Machine Girl. With LCD Sound System, Indie Sleaze, they remember going to gentrified coffee shops in their inner city, the infinity scarves on men and women, the annoying hipster millennial type, versus a Machine Girl fan who's like a young chronically, Zoomer. Chronically, chronically online. I'd still rather hang out with a aged millennial hipster type who's into LCD mm-hmm. sound system. At least the hipster millennial has life experience. Exactly. I think we're gonna start seeing a trend here. The more online an artist pulls, the further out they're gonna be getting in this bracket. That's my prediction right now. It comes down to Machine, Machine Girl. Girl. Okay, Breakins versus Crystal Castles. A lot of normie girls listen to Breakins. It's really like baby's first hyper pop. Crystal Castles, I've known fans of them before they were even popping off on TikTok again. Oh, sorry. I'm showing my old head status over here, but their fans did consist of annoying alt girls in the past, and it does seem like they still continue to consist of annoying alt girls. Crystal Castles is what I'm leading to. Yeah, Crystal Castles, worse fan base. Bedwetters love club. When you think American football fan versus Joyce Manor fan, what type of dude do you think of? I'm just going to go off here. He's in college, makes jokes about his mental illness, not as a way to healthily cope with it, but as a way to avoid his problems. Right. Or or to get girls. And if he gets the opportunity to get with a hot girl, which is totally possible. Yeah. It's not like that he hasn't been able to do that. He's gotten lucky once or twice. Yeah. He'll completely not be able to perform in bed right. or he'll uh, last very quickly. The girl will end up spreading rumors about yeah. him to the rest of the alt girls on campus. Therefore, Ruining his reputation. Yes, ruining his reputation among 
among the other alt girls that would even give a guy who listens to Joyce Manor or American yeah. Football a chance in the first place. Um, you know, likes to bring over his other friends and work on you know a project about Midwest emo yeah. that barely just takes off. Maybe gets a few downloads on Bandcamp here or there. So there's 90% overlap between these fan bases, but that 10% extra. If you're into American football, there's really no guarantee that you know who Joyce Manor is. But if you know who Joyce Manor is, you definitely know American football. Because they're a bit more online, they're a bit more aggravating, they get on your nerves a bit more. So I'm gonna go with Joyce Manor. My Chemical Romance versus Sunny Day Real Estate. I think the issue with this is we're pinning up two different ages of, of weird emo fans who are annoying for different reasons and also different time periods, none of which exist anymore or take place in the current day. You think MCR, you think the kids in school that were in band and they would like cuddle on the floor in the hall. Cuddle puddle, yeah, I think is what they yeah, used to call it. It wasn't cool to be a fan of MCR back in the day, but at least they had name recognition. Like, exactly. Like you knew who they were. When Sunny Day Real Estate was big, if you were a fan of theirs, like you were probably pretty weird. And, and if you're a fan of Sunny Day Real Estate now, you're, you're probably dating yourself as being kind of like washed up ex-emo dude. My Chemical Romance. I'm gonna go with MCR. Mom Jeans versus MGK is funny. Okay, so MGK fan, uh, teenage girl, Mom Jeans fan, likes teenage girls. I I'm gonna go with Machine Jeans on this one. I feel like we should be having this conversation in 2018, yet here we are. I'm gonna go with my gut and I'm gonna say Juice World right off the rip. So anything bad you can say about the Little Peep fan base is 10 times worse for Juice World. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think Juice World. Yeah. Indie Sleaze. First up, Always versus slow dive. When I think slow dive, a guy who's like burnt every bridge regarding female friends because he's ended up DMing them at 3 a.m. As opposed to like always, this is kind of just your milk toast indie yeah. guy. Like this is, there's nothing too special about him. They have such a wide like indie appeal. No uh, harm, no foul, you know? Slow dive, it's all harm, all foul. Yeah. We need to get the ref out here blowing the whistle on slow dive fans. And so for that reason, slow dive. I've known some annoying Beach House fans. Yeah. Black Country New I've Road. some annoying oranges. Hey Apple. Yeah. Knife. I haven't known any Black Country New Road fans, so I'm kind of just going off the dome for this one. But look, if I had to imagine a Black Country New Road fan, just from what I'm seeing on TikTok, just from what I'm seeing on Instagram, slightly edgier indie guy. I would categorize myself as an empath. I'd say I, I'm an empath. I'm a very feeling person. But that mode in my head like turns off when I see a Black Country New Road fan, and I want nothing but the worst for them. So I'm going to say Black Country New Road, worst fan base. Black Midi versus The Garden. We've Seeing Garden fans firsthand, yeah. not seeing Black Midi fans firsthand. Mm -hmm. However, a Black Midi fan would be more proud of the fact that they're a Black Midi fan than a Garden fan would feel about the Garden. I agree with that. And yeah. So for that reason, I'm gonna say Black Midi. Not only are these like two different decades we're comparing, but they're on the opposite ends of the spectrum, even if they were within the same decade. MGMT is so chaotic good, and yeah. Steve Lacey is like the chaotic evil in this yeah, situation. I see that. More annoying fan base. Personally, I think it's clear. We've seen enough that Steve Lacey has totally, and it's it's really sad for him. Quiz essential TikTok audience. Yeah. Steve Lacey, I think you're taking the cake here. Girly boppers. Lana Del Rey and Soccer Mommy. This one is pretty much a lay down for me. Between these two fan bases, which one has more antidepressant prescriptions? It's gotta be Lana Del Rey. The Lana Del Rey fans, they take all their issues and then they, they wrap it up as part of the aesthetic of being a fan of Lana Del Rey. Exactly. Definitely worse music fan base charlie xcx and claro quaint girl bedroom pop yes. versus like something you're, you're gonna take poppers to basically right right okay i think between the two charlie has more of a diehard fan base than claro with that comes extreme behavior and because of that i think charlie xcx even though it's again it's not like an intense heated match here i think yeah charlie xcx faye webster and ethel kane to me it's obviously ethel kane to me. Right, right. We're not just dealing with somebody who has a culture behind them that's like, oh, like she's so mommy, she's like yeah, so queen. Yeah. That mixed with an intense online fan base, yeah. I feel like. So that alone makes it so much worse than Faye Webster, who may, just makes this kind of chill. Not online fan base versus extremely online fan base. Goes yeah. without saying, Ethel Kane, worst fan base. Here we go. Biaba Doobie, Taylor Swift. So I'm going to argue in favor of Taylor Swift because she is the closest thing that any American singer has that's comparable to like a K-pop stan fan base. 100%. Whether you're like a down bad guy who likes her or you're just like a BPD girl who's a fan of Biaba Doobie, it all pales in comparison. So Taylor Swift, you're the winner. Whatever happened to... 
Yikes. So this is really like a miscellaneous category. We even have some stuff that isn't music related, but they still have very notable fan bases. Burzum versus Blood on the Dance Floor. I don't know anyone that wraps Blood on the Dance Floor merch anymore. You know, plenty of people you'll see if you go to like a smaller show, you'll, you'll see people that wear Burzum merch, uh, and those people are annoying. Comparing them to, let's say you're like what? 15, 16 year old Blood on the Dance Floor fan. Right. You're living vicariously through like old emo like history online on TikTok or Instagram on, mm -hmm. or whatever. You'll be aware of their history and be like, oh, you know what? I really like their music, but I can understand like they're bad people. Mm -hmm. With Burzum, they're like, that makes the music more real. So I think Burzum yeah. is a clear winner here. Attila versus R. Kelly. Okay, so what you want about R. Kelly, Attila made these shirts popular. He literally made these shirts. Attila. Mindless self-indulgence versus Deant Word. See, the thing is, I can't really imagine the Deant Word fan base. I'm surprised they haven't become TikTokified like Mindless Self Indulgence has. However, because the MSI fan base probably has a little bit more of that TikTok support, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be the, the Mindless Self Indulgence yeah, fan base. Yeah, I'd agree with that one. Okay, now we have R slash Goon Cave and vape flavors, which are state specific. So with R slash Goon Cave, I mean, their community is full of addicts. It's full of people who have completely devoted their free time. This is basically a hobby for them. It's truly an obsession. It's true to the name. They really do create a cave for gooning. I would imagine that every person that goons probably vapes, but not everybody who vapes goons. You think about how, who has more potential to be uh, harmful to society. That's where it gets obvious. Vape flavors. 100 Gax versus Bjork. Um, it's not like Bjork doesn't have her own dedicated online culture, but compared to that of like 100 Gax, I feel like they're going to win. With 100 Gax, you're going to see a lot of people that have like discord sense of humor. The Bjork fan is, is probably more of a sociable person than the 100 Gax fan. Yeah. That alone... What would make them more conducive to living in broader society? Yeah. So 100 Gax is worse. Machine Girl versus Crystal Castles. To me, it's Machine Girl. They have more of like a hardcore, ironic, self-aware, edgy fan base yeah. than Crystal Castles. And I've also interacted with a lot of Machine Girl fans live at their concerts. Maybe it's recency bias, but I'm going to give it to Machine Girl because of that. Cardi versus Suicide, Suicide Boys. Boys. With Cardi, it's like he just casts a, sh a big shadow over everything. I mean, he, he has taken his obsessive fan base and he scaled that out bigger than Suicide Boys ever has. There's so much power behind Cardi and I think because of that, Cardi's got to win compared yeah, to Suicide Boys. Fan base. Yeet and Space Ghost Perp. Okay, so realistically, we're looking at Yeet fans being ignorant and rage people. Either you're an ironic fan of Space Ghost Perp or you're an unironic fan of Space Ghost Perp, which either way, that, that spells trouble for you. The Space Ghost Perp concert would be far more tolerable even if it's annoying in a more cerebral way oh, compared yeah. to the Yeet concert, you okay. know what I mean? I, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeet has a worse fan base than Space Ghost Perp. Alright, so this one's pretty obvious to me. So picture the theater kids on the bus in high school that would sing at the top of their lungs and no one was singing along with them. It's like you'd still hang out with the annoying alt kid because that's pretty much all you had. Because yeah. you know what? You're going to hang out with the loud you know, theater kid? That's right. going to be completely that, intolerable. That's, such a, that's, that's also just such a bad look on you. You got to do that for survival purposes as well. Yeah. So I'm going to say MCR is worse. Corn versus Ghost. What can you expect from a fan base where their favorite artist is uh, a band that makes Scooby-Doo chase music. I think that Ghost is the Imagine Dragons of metal. Here's what I mean by that. Okay, so I want everyone right now to ask yourself, are you an Imagine Dragons fan? The answer is most likely no. Now ask yourself, do you know anyone who's an Imagine Dragons fan? The answer is most likely going to be no. But if you do know any people, out of those people, how many of those people like Imagine Dragons so much that they would pay to go to one of their concerts? Nobody has any clue where Imagine Dragons fans are coming from in order to, like, pay money to go to their concerts. Yet, despite that, that they're, like, top charting. Anytime they release an album, it goes straight to number one. They always get all the radio time. No one knows where that's coming from. And I think that exact same analogy can be applied to Ghost within the metal community. So for that reason, Ghost, you're moving on. Deftones versus Megadeth. Okay, when I close my eyes and I picture what a Deftones fan is like, I am exactly picturing moist critical. That's the exact person I'm thinking of in terms of what they look like, their personality, their sense of humor. So really we're comparing moist critical to a 47 year old man who's been divorced three times and still hates his ex-wife. I would give a slight advantage to moist critical. So for that reason, Megadeth fan, less tolerable, worse fan than a Deftones fan. We are dealing with two insane champions here, two legends. This is one for the ages. If I'm talking to a Radiohead fan, I know that I will be able 
to enjoy the conversation with them about their music compared to the kind of conversation I would have with a Weezer fan. I do not want to sit there and hear about how much they find joy in Weezer's discography past the Blue Album, past Pinkerton, whatever. Um, So true. Yeah, for everything that's on this bracket right now though the closest thing to if reddit was a band because of that weezer weezer has a worse fan base than radiohead video game osts versus the smiths again we're back to the jrotc kid you know we're dealing with the kind of kid who would consistently remind you that he rode his bike to school um in the (laughs) in the morning Compared to, you know, a kid who at worst would probably like to LARP as someone who was from the UK at that time saying things like bloody. I just don't want to get anywhere within 10 feet of the video game OSTs and military marches, kid. When you think of the type of cringe that the ROTC video game OST military marches kid is, there's an air of innocence to him. He lives inside of this bubble that has not been pierced yet by the cruelty of this world. The Smith's kid is the perpetrator of that very same cruelty. But he's probably just as hurt. He obviously has that like poetic softness in his heart. The softness was crushed by a girl when he was 15 and tearing the legs off of grasshoppers and burying their heads into ant We're we're dealing with Brian Griffin versus Peter Griffin here. Okay, after a much heated debate, we've decided to go with the Smiths uh, simply because they're British. Lana Del Rey versus Charlie XCX. The kind of substances that I think the Charlie XCX fan would probably abuse would be like Ket, Poppers, yeah. MDMA. Party as a, stuff, yeah. Yeah, party stuff, as opposed to Lana Del Rey abusing more weed, stuff that would try to calm you down from like an emotional mania. I'd say the Lana Del Rey fan would be more of a drag to be around and is like more annoying for that reason. I'm more annoyed by the upper people than by the downer people. The Lana fan is going to be more draining to an extrovert, which is closer to what a normie is. Therefore, they're going to be more abrasive to wider society as a whole. Therefore, Lana's fan base wins for worse. Ethel Kane versus Taylor Swift. I don't think anybody's going to beat Swifties. I mean, Swifties are just so, compared to an Ethel Kane fan, I don't care how online you are as an Ethel Kane fan. If you're a Swiftie, the Ethel Kane fan is going to do that whole, like, detached, ironic, oh, I don't care about anything, like, you know, online personality trait thing. But the Swiftie, on the other hand, this is the kind of person who who carries around, like, one of those one-gallon water bottles, and it's labeled, like, one-eighth. You're almost there. The kind of person that needs encouragement to drink water. Taylor Swift, your fan base is more annoying than Ethel Kane's. Burzum versus Attila, we're dealing with two different references to pagan war villains. I was at a show one time and I started talking to a girl there and she was a big Attila fan and she was talking about how she saw him one time and when she was there she ended up meeting him, she stayed after and she got him to sign her ass with a sharpie. Not only is that like gross, but she was explaining it to me as if she was bragging like it was something to brag about and it was like really cool. That's really what I picture when I think of an Attila fan. Yes, so Attila has a worse fan base than Burzum. Mindless self-indulgence versus vape flavors. I'd still rather hang out with the the worst mindless self-indulgence fan versus uh, the worst vapor. There's no mindless self-indulgence equivalent to a guy who spends $300 on a box mod. It was doomed from the start. All right, we've made it to the Sweet 16. Who has the worst fan base, 100 Gex or Machine Girl? People that are like so closely knit together. Like it's really not that far away from the 100 Gex fan to the Machine Girl fan, so this is pretty difficult, honestly. So I'd say at this point, because the fans are so similar, we kind of just have to go off of the aesthetics at this point. 100 Gex is more offensive to the eyes, and that's going to be reflected in how their fan base communicates, organizes, and behaves in public. These people have taken all of the aesthetics and behavior of the kind of person who would have wore uh, candy bracelets, Invader yeah. Zim hats. Um, broken side fans. Would have carried around their 3DS, 100 Gex is going to have the worst fan base compared to Machine Girl. Yeah. Another battle for the ages. Who has the worst fan base, Cardi or Yeats? Think about how much Yeats embraces his goofiness and his silliness. Mm -hmm. Whether it's his ad-libs, whether it's his aesthetics. The fact that Cardi is serious is going to make his fan base look even worse when they act goofy and cringe. 100%, exactly. Cardi, your fan base is worse. All right, My Chemical Romance versus Juice World 2 Emo Legends. One artist is more derivative of the other which in turn is going, is going to reflect on their fan base as being less original. So I'm, I'm already favoring Juice World a bit here. The sad themes that you have in My Chemical Romance's music... Um, They're more nuanced. The type of writing that's an emo rap does not hold a candle to the type 
of writing in older emo music. I think that I would rather be friends with an MCR fan in 2007 than a Juice World fan in 2018. Oh, 100%. Juice World takes the case. Yes. Slow Dive versus Steve Lacey. I think that at this point, Steve Lacey, anything we can say about his fan base, it's really a one trick pony. The only reason he's gotten this far is, oh, TikTok fan base, TikTok fan base, they don't know his actual music. They don't have any other defining characteristics besides that. Slow Dive, on the other hand, you could write an essay on like all the problems that those people have. And you also have the added bonus of them also having uh, now heavy on TikTok audience as well. So they have everything that Steve Lacey has against him, plus extras. Slow Dive, worse fan base than Steve Lacey. Comparing Ghost to Megadeth. If you're a guy who's like really into doom metal, you could argue that they're actively harming the genre versus Megadeth fans. Their legacy, their legacy. Yeah, yeah. They can't really actively harm anything because they're about to die of old age. They're going to experience their own Megadeth themselves very soon. Ghost. Ghost, way worse than Megadeth fans. Weezer versus the Smiths. Once again, we have something that's going to be a very hotly debated, has been hotly debated for a long time now, and I have a feeling this isn't even going to settle that either. Think about the reaction that Weezer fans had when they released a cover of Toto's Africa. Oh like, I think God. that tells you everything, bro. Like, I mean, we got to give it to Weezer here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Weezer has a worse fan base than the Smiths. Lana Del Rey versus Taylor Swift. Man, th just think about the kind of art they're appreciating, that each of these fan bases are appreciating. You know what? If you look at Taylor's career and you look at the kind of music she's making, what she was making, 10 years ago and what she's making now. She's just trying to be Lana now. And you guys are worse than Lana Del Rey fans. What do you want me to say? Attila versus vape flavors. Okay, so every Attila fan vapes. Not every vapor is an Attila fan. Because Attila shares so many characteristics with the average vape enjoyer, but they're a smaller fandom, that means they're much more concentrated. So you have a more concentrated level of insufferability and cringe. You're not going to find an Attila fan that's like chill. But you'll find people who vape who are chill, at least, at the yeah. very least. So that, you know, Attila has the worst fan base. The quarterfinals have begun. 100 Gex versus Cardi. At the point in the bracket that we're getting to, if you were to be locked in a room with one of these fans, you could turn it into a Mr. Beast challenge video. The extremes for both Cardi and Gex are gonna be off the charts insane. So I think the only way we'll be able to get through this comparison is by looking at pure averages and no longer focusing on like what the extremes of either fan base is gonna look like. The 100 Gex fan is probably so socially stunted and albeit society's very crazy, but I, I think that the 100 Gex fan, regardless of how crazy society is, still has a harder time integrating in versus mm -hmm. the Cardi fan. Whether it's because of this image they have of themselves in their head or their own personal life experiences or whatever. So because of that 100 Gex, you have beat a worse out fan base than Cardi. Juice World versus Slow Dive. You know what? I will say this: the Juice World fan, they're gonna grow out of it. Slow Dive, those guys are are always gonna be twenty two. The Juice World fan can only do drugs for so long. The Slow Dive fan can manipulate women for an eternity. Slow Dive, you beat out Juice World. Ghost versus Weezer. You're gonna have cringe older Ghost fans. The really young Ghost fans, they might not be as cringe because they haven't been corrupted by all the weirdo doom metal stuff yet. Every single age bracket, every single age demographic, they're going to be pretty much the same level of cringe. I think Weezer still beats them. Yeah. I think I think Weezer still comes out on top. Taylor Swift versus Attila. How many Taylor Swift fans have you met in real life that are really bad and aren't just stuff you've seen on the internet? Average Taylor Swift fan versus average Attila fan, I think the average Attila fan. You're, I think you're right. It probably still beats out the worse. average Taylor Swift fan. Yeah. The final four, the semifinals, 100 Gex takes Slow Dive. Weezer takes Attila. We have whittled it down from 64 artists down to just two, and we're about to say the final one. No one is ever going to look back on Weezer and think, yeah, those guys were cool, and I was cool for being a part of that. When society is in ruins, when empires have fallen, Weezer will still be cringe. 100 Gex, whether they're remembered as fondly, probably will still live on in the hearts of those people. Weezer has the worst fan base of all time. Of all the saddest things of word and pen were these. Neopunk FM was right again. Neopunk FM.